going to do today is the Janome quilt binder or quilt binder set and um, I wanted to explain a little bit about this um, piece of equipment to you. I have jokingly said at a number of presentations that I have done on this um, attachment that it is a piece of gynecological equipment. Um, they, security at Vancouver Airport did in fact ask me on one occasion if I was a doctor when I was going through security on my way somewhere and I had this in my hand luggage. Well, needless to say, I told her that I was, uh, I taught sewing. She didn't believe me. Any event, this uh, Janome quilt binder set is available for Janome 7mm machines and Janome 9mm machines. This foot comes with the binder set. In fact, everything you see here comes with the package called the quilt binder set. And this is the foot for 9mm machines and this is the foot for seven millimeter machines um, and if, if you're not sure what that is it's the space or the opening in your foot is it a seven millimeter opening in your needle plate and foot or is it nine millimeters and if you're not sure you certainly can ask your dealer or you can send me a query and I will try my best to answer okay so what comes with the package is the foot um, a base plate a uh, gynecological equipment or the actual binder attachment and three screws. One screw is longer than the other two. And what I want to do is put this foot onto the machine. Um, I am incidentally today sewing on the uh, Janome M7, the Continental M7, just because it's here and I love it. Um, I do have several other machines here because I'm busy taping an awful lot of things, but this is the one that I've chosen to work on. This quilt binder, as I've already said, can be used on any machine that has a rectangular bobbin cover. Um, it doesn't matter whether your machine is seven millimeter or nine millimeter. And if you have a square shaped bobbin cover, unfortunately, this quilt binder will not work with your machine. But most of our machines have this rectangular shaped bobbin cover, even as far um, down the line as the Janome 2030. You can use this quilt binder on that machine. So I've taken the bobbin cover off because the base plate has got a little bobbin cover on the back of the base plate. And we are going to put that onto the machine uh, as the bobbin cover. And I'm going to take the long screw, the one long screw, and screw it into the needle plate. Now I could turn it at an angle and screw it in like that, but I happen to prefer the uh, straight on angle. And then what we do is we take the uh, binder attachment and we attach it to the base plate with the other two screws. And I'm not going to tighten those screws completely at this point because I may move this binder a little bit from side to side when I've got the machine set up. Now I have just a small little quilt sandwich here because you don't want to watch me going all the way around a queen size quilt uh, today. Um, so it works exactly the same. I've done this on queen size quilts, king size quilts, you name it. In fact, from cutting my binding strips, let me see if I can get this in the camera. All right, cutting my binding strips, to uh, folding up a finished quilt with the um, binding already applied to the quilt, I can do that in 45 minutes. Um, I can do it in a little longer, maybe an hour and a quarter, possibly an hour and a half, if I machine sew my binding on with the traditional double fold binding, which I sew on the back of my quilt, flip over to the front, and then stitch the binding down on the front. This method is different. This method applies your binding to the quilt in one go. So why I have got this here is I want to show you uh, how I join my binding strips. 
So I've put it on th this piece of fabric here and you can see that I have laid my two binding strips at right angles to one another and you may or may not where you are see the stitching but I did stitching at a 45 degree angle. I like to place my uh, binding strips like that because I can see exactly where to start and exactly where to end. If I was to place them directly over one another I wouldn't be able to see that and now all I do is I just trim off that little edge bit and there I have it. Now if I was doing this um, under normal circumstances and not on an Instagram live I would probably take this over to uh, the ironing board and press my um, binding, uh, the, my seam but I'm just going to finger press it, finger press it here because it, it, it's quicker. Right, I am also not going to press that seam open because if I do that, when it goes through the binder, it's going to flip the seam towards the back of the binder anyway, so why bother? I am now going to feed the binding strip into the binder with the wrong side facing me. That's really important, otherwise your binding is going to be sewn to your quilt with the outside, the, the wrong side of the binding facing outwards. And as you can see, as it goes through the binder, this is facing, the seam is facing towards the back or the end of my binding strip. And so that will just, it, it'll just go with the flow of the binder. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to feed the fabric into the binder. Now you can cut the end of it at a 45 degree angle if you wish. I don't normally worry too much um, because I find it quite easy to get it through with a pair of scissors or even a pin, a pair of tweezers. Any of those sort of things will get it through the binder. And you will see now that what's happened is the binder attachment has folded the raw edges of my strip towards the wrong side and now I am going to put my quilt into what I call the mouth of the binder and that goes in there. I always like to start somewhere down one of the sides of my uh, quilt, not at a corner, that's my preference. Um, and I am now just going to tighten those screws a little. Um, you probably want to know, and I'm just going to look at, the, at my cell phone quickly to see if there are any questions to this point. Um, can you use the Wide Cover Pro on your 15,000? That is an exceptionally good question. Um, you're talking about the tape binders for the Cover Pro? Absolutely. This particular quilt binder set comes with a 50 millimeter, 15, one five millimeter to 50 millimeter measurement or um, in, in inches, which is kind of what I prefer to work in, um, it, the, you, you cut your binding strip at two inches. And then when it does its folding over, your finished binding on your quilt is half an inch. If you use the the binder attachments that come with the Cover Pro, or they don't come with the Cover Pro, let me correct myself, they're optional accessories to the Cover Pro um, serger. Um, there are three, and they give you finished binding of a three-eighths of an inch, four-eighths of an inch, which would be exactly the same as this, and five-eighths of an inch. So the question was, could I use that wide one and get a wide binding of five-eighths of an inch? Yes, you can. However, you still need the base plate that comes with this package because the base plate that fits on the Cover Pro does not fit on the 15,000 or any of our sewing machines. It has got a completely different configuration. But once you have both the base plates, you can mix and match the actual binder attachment. Um, can I zoom in nearer the needle? Yes, I can certainly do that. Um, Right, hopefully that's better for you. And yes, I've answered, you cut the binding strips two inches. You can cut them one and seven eighths inches, but quite frankly, I just find it easier to cut them two inches. And uh, here we go. Now, the next thing I want to tell you is that 
uh, I mentioned earlier that we had the 9mm foot that comes with a package and the 7mm foot comes with the 7mm package. But I actually quite like using the AccuFeed Flex Feet. Now, obviously, these will only work on a machine that has AccuFeed Flex. The M7 has it and a number of our other machines have it. This is the AccuFeed Flex Wide. Um, or dual prong. This is the single one and this is our HP2 which only does a straight stitch but all, it also has AccuFeed Flex and all of these feet I have got very used to using. My advice would be don't start out using these feet if you have them with your machine. Rather use the one that comes with the package, the quilt binder package because you, I, I the, the reason is that there's a certain distance between the front of the foot and the edge of the binder. And those other AccuFeed feet come closer to the edge of the binder. And you might find it a little difficult um, when you are learning this um, quilt binder. Now, I do need to mention to you uh, the uh, quilt binder set is... Um, the, the quilt binder set, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought there. Anyway, we'll get, uh, it'll come back to me in a minute. Um, we've got that on the machine now. Now we need to select the stitch we're going to use. Yes, you most definitely could do a straight stitch here to sew your binding down. However, I actually like to use a serpentine stitch. So I'm going to go to the quilting category on my machine and select the uh, serpentine stitch. And I like to make my serpentine stitch about six wide and about two long. You can elongate it much more and reduce the width of it much more. It just depends on your preference. And now I'm going to start sewing. And you might wonder why I am using a yellow thread in my needle. It's just a yellow cotton thread. It's because I want you to be able to see the stitching on the red binding fabric. If I wasn't using that, then you might have a little bit of an issue. So uh, when we are doing normal double find, uh, double, uh, double fold binding, um, we uh, stop a certain distance from the corner because we're then going to um, fold our binding and make that little mitre. In this particular technique, it's different. You do not stop before you get to the corner. You're actually going to continue right to the edge of your quilt. And then I'm going to raise my needle and I am going to raise my presser foot. And now I am going to pull the binding through the binder to the back and I have a finger pressing tool you can use your fingernail if you want um, and I am using a finger pressing tool to finger press my binding strip as it came out of the binder now I'm going to take that a fair distance because you'll see in a moment I need a little bit of wiggle room with my binding why did I take it out to the back? Well, because you do not want the binding tape to come out of the mouth of the binder. If it comes out of the mouth of the binder, that's a little tricky to fix. So what I now do is I put my presser foot down so that it's holding my binding in place. I pull long tails and cut these tails off. So let's bring this round here and I'm going to keep those those threads, the tails from the first side of my quilt, simply because I find that easier to get going on the second side when you have tails to pull. And now what you do is you are going to manually fold the uh, binding, uh, fold a little mitre into your binding. Now I'm going to show you in a moment, I'll get my fingers out of the way in a moment, you are only going to pin through the top layer. You're not going all the way through the quilt because this is only your mitre on the top of your quilt. On the back of your quilt, you're going to need to do the same thing. So on the back, you're going to come by now and you're going to fold your little mitre again and you're going to get it positioned how it should look. 
and again you're going to take the pin and pin it in place. When you're happy with what the mitre looks like on the back and the mitre looks like on the front, you are ready to do what I call the paper bag for hyperventilation. All right, this is probably the trickiest part of using the quilt binder. And I am going to tell you something, you may not like to hear it, but if you have got a quilt binder and you've never used it or you tried it and gave up after one or two tries, please know this is a technique that requires practice. You would be shocked if you saw the first little quilt that I bound using this quilt binder. In fact, I have a story to tell you is that when I saw this, uh, just in a picture in advance of us getting it, and we've incidentally had this on the, in the Janome uh, line of accessories for many years. Um, I looked at the promotional information that came to me and I told my boss not to order very many because us quilters, we knew how to do binding and we weren't going to pay what the cost of this was likely to be. And he ordered 10 of these quilt binders for the whole of Canada. And I w went to do a demonstration at a dealer uh, store in Vancouver and I sold all 10 quilt binders in about 20 minutes. And then Janome was out of stock of these quilt binders for three months because we had to wait for more to come all the way from Japan. And I was very unpopular because the dealers were complaining, the consumers were complaining. So I misjudged how much quilters actually don't like doing their binding and want to reduce the amount of time that it takes to do your binding. So um, as I say, this requires practice. So don't give up. Practice makes perfect. And I've probably done four or five hundred quilts, maybe more at this stage um, with this quilt binder and I'm pretty good at it. So let me give you the benefit of my wisdom for this tricky part. What you're now going to do is you're going to raise your presser foot again and you are going to hold the binding at the back of the binder and you're going to hold the binding on the, uh, that's gone through the binder. And I'm doing this rocking motion backwards and forwards. That flipped out a little there. So do you see what I'm doing? Is I'm kind of doing this little rocking motion. I call it that. I don't know what it, what it should be called, but it makes sense for me to call it that. And um, I have... When I do that, and the reason I do that is because I can feel if there is an obstruction. If there is an obstruction, it means somewhere my binding has got twisted or popped out of a guide or something's not right. And then I need to fix it before I start sewing the next side. Otherwise, I'm going to be in trouble. So I am now back to where I started and I'm going to put my presser foot down. I'm also going to press the pattern restart on my machine and I have my two thread tails that I had um, from the first side because they will help me to get the beginning part of the second side of the quilt through the machine. I just tug very gently with those. Also notice I'm about to break a cardinal rule, which is don't sew over pins. Well, I don't have an option here because if I take the pins out before I've sewn that binding, my mitre folds that I took trouble to do nicely may come undone or shift. So I have no choice. I have to sew over those pins. So to avoid a drama, I am reducing my speed to virtually nothing. And I'm now going to start sewing and the machine is going to go very slowly. It did its tie off and now it is doing my little serpentine stitch, literally one stitch at a time. And I now know that I am past my um, pins, so I know I'm good to go. And now I simply go down the next side of the quilt. Now notice that my quilt is right to the back of the mouth of the binder. And so I say to people, what you need to do is think gag. It's an ugly thing, so you probably will remember it. Put the thing right to the back of your mouth, kind of where you would put your finger and gag, okay? Because if you don't, what will happen is your binding will be sort of floppy floppy on the edge of your quilt. You need to have the quilt all the way into the uh, binding. All right, so what I have done is I have done, uh, let me just turn it this way so that you can see. I have done one corner. 
I am not going to take up time to do more corners uh, and the reason for that is is that it's kind of boring to watch the same thing over and over and also um, on today's Janome life post I have uh, put a whole list of um, links where you can get information um, some of them are picture tutorials, some of them are video tutorials, some of them are Facebook pages. For example, Genomi America is doing a Facebook Live every day, and I've linked to one of those. So there is a whole list of places on Genomi Life blog, that's genomilife.wordpress.com, or access the blog from the blog tab on genomi.ca. Um, and you will be able to watch other videos and presentations by other people, not just me, showing you how to use the quilt binder. You are also very, very welcome. If you hit an obstacle or you can't remember something I said, you are welcome to send queries on our Instagram page, on our Facebook page, or on Genomi Life. All three venues are places where you can ask questions and I personally am the one that answers those questions and I will be more than happy to do so. Also just to remind you that if you tuned in late to this Instagram Instagram live today and you missed the beginning bit don't fret because as soon as this live is finished we will upload it to our story and it will circulate on our story for the next 24 hours and we don't stop there we are so accommodating please give us a day or two to edit this uh, instagram live and we will also post it to our genomi life YouTube channel where you can then watch it anytime you like after this 24 hour story on Instagram is over. Okay, so that is what I wanted to tell you about the quilt binder, but don't run away because I want to check to see that um, I don't have any more questions. Where did I get the, where did the excess binding go from the corner? Did you pull it back through the binder while rocking the sandwich through? Yes. Good question. Obviously, the camera is a bit limited because we zoomed in at somebody else's request. And so you didn't see uh, where I was pulling it at the back of the binder. Um, I also didn't show you this tape stand um, because I wanted to show you how I join the um, uh, tails or the, the strips of binding. I didn't put it on the tape stand so let's bring it over here to the camera and uh, let's see if you can see it well never mind I will post a picture of it on um, Genomi Life uh, I will add it to today's post so that you can see it um, that tape stand is where the the uh, long strings of tape will be you can wind them on that is another um, optional accessory that we have featured on Genomi Life so you could also look in the search box for Genomi tape stand and uh, that will come up and it'll give you the part numbers and more about it. Um, so yes that why is it not a straight stitch? Well you can do a straight stitch. I did mention that earlier in this Instagram live. I prefer to do a decorative stitch because I find straight stitches boring. Also if you are doing a straight stitch you do need to be very accurate because if you're not accurate it can slip off the edge of the binding or it can look wavy so if you do a wavy stitch or a simple decorative stitch it kind of hides that and I can go way quicker from corner to corner on my quilt if I use a serpentine stitch can you show the stitches on the back of the quilt absolutely I can there they are I have flipped it over for you to see um and then I wanted to tell you a couple of things. Um, something very interesting is that Janome will be featured on the global television morning show tomorrow here in Canada. That show is at 9 a.m. And uh, Jennifer Tryon uh, from the shopping channel and Tryon A ha Handmade Life is going to show a wonderful Mother's Day project, how to use the AccuSketch app and the Janome Skyline S9 to do an embroidered tea towel using a family heirloom recipe, a grandmother's written recipe. So you might want to tune in if you live in Canada and you can get 
the uh, global morning show at 9 a.m. I believe, I don't know, I've asked and I was told it's this, but I'm hoping it's correct that it's 9 a.m. in your time zone. So it doesn't matter what time zone you're in. All right. Um, I also wanted to mention that Erin, Janome Girl, will be back on Instagram Live on Thursday this week, same time, same place, and she will be doing ruler work, Janome ruler work. So if you want to learn how to quilt with a ruler, that uh, will be um, on Thursday. The other thing I wanted to mention is that our dealers are all working really hard, many of them behind closed doors, but they are answering their, answering their phones, they are returning uh, emails, uh, replying to emails, and we have a drop ship sale on at the moment um, where you can call your dealer and we will ship the machine direct to your house and you can get it at your door. You do not even need, need to leave your house or get out of your PJs if that's what you, you're living in at the moment. Um, the other thing is I did want to mention that after the global TV show tomorrow, uh, there will be a special deal on the S9, the Skyline S9, and you can contact your Genomi Canada dealer to get details of that special deal. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this beneficial. And as I said, do go to Genomi Life uh, today um, because all there are many more resources and videos that I have linked to there so that you can see more about how to use this quilt binder set. Thank you. See you again soon.